there are so many things that are like obsessive about productivity rules that just say productivity is following these rules, these best practices, wake up at 5 a.m., have a miracle morning, eat the frog, work in sprints. Uh, so there are just tons of these arbitrary rules and best practices that traditional productivity experts love to throw out there. But fuck the rules. Honestly, that's where I'm at with productivity and traditional advice at this point. It's about figuring out what works for you. So in this week's Brighter Broadcast, we are talking about how to decide which productivity tips you should listen to and which should GTFO your life. And to help you decide and to help you walk you through some examples, I am going to be talking about some of the rules that I have broken and why I decided, screw them. First, let's get to know each other. If you're here, say hi and comment below with which of productivity rules you have tried to follow in the past and how they worked for you. Let me know. I am Brittany Berger. I'm the founder of WorkBrighter.co, and this is the Brighter Broadcast, your 10, 15-minute-ish tip to work brighter and live better this week. Now, back to these productivity best practices. There are tons of them, and over the years, I've tried probably all of them, Working at Pomodoro's, uh, not checking email first thing in the morning. Uh, basically, if, it, if a productivity article had been written about it, I tried it back in the day and back when I was trying to work smarter and be as productive as possible. And if you know about the Work Writer brand, that you know it's all about going beyond working smarter because I just found that that ish did not work for me. Part of what led me to start working brighter was realizing that working smarter was not enough. Those rules did not always work, and sometimes they made me way less productive, and they honestly hurt my productivity more than they helped anything. I'm not saying that those rules are wrong or that they don't work for the people who said they were good. It's just that those rules worked for them and not for me. And that's because one of the core values of Work Writer is that productivity is personal. You can't achieve it by following other people's roadmaps and frameworks and day structures. I have actual literal data from Toggle, my time tracking tool, that proved that these best practices were making me worse. That when I tried listening to ambient noise, when I wrote client work, it took longer than when I listened to Hamilton. So to help you see what I mean by personalizing productivity and working brighter, I am just walking you through a few rules that I found the hard way it didn't work for me and how to decide whether or not they're for you so you don't have to go through all this experimenting like I did because it's exhausting. So let's get this one out of the way because I feel so strongly about this and I actually know that Mindy Kaling is on my side so I feel like I'm in the right. You know, who are you going to listen to? A super old dude who wrote a book 20 years ago or Mindy Kaling? Let's talk about waking up early and miracle mornings. When I was side hustling, all of the advice said to wake up early and work on your side hustle. Uh, it's just kind of known as like a magic time of day for side hustling and starting new projects. Yeah, like get it out of the way before you go to your day job. So when I first got started at the time, it was uh, a book blog that I was working on. I tried to do that. It was awful. It was so awful, guys. I never got used to it like people say that you're going to, and that's because it's just not my body's natural rhythm. Ever since childhood, I have just been a night owl through and through. Uh, I'm also, I've also since learned that I'm really creative at night and not in the morning. So the work I was doing in the morning just like wasn't even good. I would wake up, I'd be so groggy, I would try to bang out a book review, it would suck. And then I would be exhausted at night when I could have been doing really great work. Eventually, the, I realized the most that I could do before work in the morning for my book blog was just reading a few pages of a book. But Nothing creative, and I still have this rule to this day, no creative work before 11 a.m. And there is a quote from Mindy Kaling that I love, and I forget the exact words right now, but it is in the blog post that I'm going to put in the comments, and it's something about how there is no sunrise so beautiful that you can convince me to wake up to see it. Um, and that's just honestly how I feel. Everyone was telling me that, you know, you wake up and you'll do your best work, and I was just like, I don't care. Or they'll say you you wake it up and you get it knocked. You get all your work knocked out of the day before you even head to your day job. And eventually got to the point where it was like, I don't care about that. There is no pro of waking up early that 
can convince me to do it at this point. I stopped trying to fight it. I am a night owl through and through. And so I learned it would be so much more productive to just own that and make it work for me. And so that's what I did. My nighttime became my prime office hours for my business. Uh, and when I was at my day job, it actually got to the point where I would come home from my day job instead of getting right to work. I would take a nap so that I could work even later at night. Because I really found that like my prime hours for writing, and this is true, and I'm not ashamed of it anymore. My prime hours for writing are like 11, a 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. I love it. I write so fast. I'm so awake and productive, no matter what my sleep schedule was like the night before. It is my prime hour. And so when I was waking up early for my day job, staying up till 1 a.m. would be a little difficult. So I took a nap when I got home from work. I would adjust my actual sleep schedule however I needed to, to make sure that I had that window where I was just like alive, open for work. And I know a lot of us feel a lot of pressure to try to be morning people. I was actually just talking with my friend this morning about how everyone is so obsessed with the perfect morning. Wake up, see how you feel and do what you need to do. Mornings are important. I won't deny, I won't disagree with everyone that says that, but I think that the way that we're looking at morning routines and waking up is just like so, so off. And it's because if you have tuned into these brighter broadcasts before, you know how I feel about how energy management trumps all, including what time you wake up. Stop trying to be morning people. It's okay to be a night owl. It's okay to be, uh, oh my God, I named this in uh, one of my other brighter broadcasts. I think we came up with afternoon turtle. Just choose what animal you're going to be and have fun with it. Comment below if you relate to this like at all. And so this next one, I do not listen to ambient noise while I work. No, no, no. It's awful for me. It annoys me so much. I don't want to hear frogs or rain. I hate frogs and rain. <laughs> I don't want to imagine that I am in a forest because chances are if I was actually in a forest, I would be scared and having an allergic reaction to something. And I don't want it to sound like a coffee shop either because I'm really nosy and I love people watching and that's distracting. I want to hear what people are saying. I want to know what they're talking about. And so I have learned that the biggest distraction when I'm working is my own voice in my mind, not anyone else's, not, you know, people working in a few cubicles over, not people in the coffee shop, but it's just like, if my brain has decided that it's going to get distracted, it's going to get distracted by whatever's there, whether I like it or not, no matter who's around me. And such is the life of someone with multiple mental illnesses. Um, I don't need something to drown out external noise. I need something to handle the noise going on inside my own damn Head. And again, that's something that I'm saying and it might sound negative, but it's something that I am not at all ashamed of because it's something that I'm learning how to work with instead of trying to change it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's just my quick mental health advocacy moment for the day. And going against every productivity expert probably ever, I have learned that the best way to do that is listening to my favorite music with lyrics or to listen to my favorite TV shows. Most productivity experts don't consider things like mood or energy or happiness or mental illness when they're giving out their cut and dry productivity advice. And that's why it doesn't work for all of us. So it might not make sense that listening to Parks or Rec. And by the way, it's not like I'm actively watching Parks and Rec. I usually turn down the brightness on the TV or like right now I'm sitting at my desk and my TV's over there. I can't even see it. But yeah, listening to Parks and Rec or Hamilton or Lizzo while I work makes me happy and motivated and gets me in a really great mindset. That's what impacts my productivity. And it just makes me happy and concentrate better and want to do better work than stupid coffee shop sounds or in nature. No offense to people who like nature, I'm just an indoor cat, and I'm sick of people trying to make me an outdoor cat, and I hate coffee shops. <laughs> but since I use music and TV as background noise around the house, I just really learned to tune that super familiar stuff out, and like the feeling that nature people get when they hear nature sounds, and the peaceful state of mind that it triggers, which is what's important to productivity, I reach that peaceful state of mind through Brooklyn Nine-Nine, or... The Good Place, that kind of stuff, basically any Mike Schur sitcom, any hip-hop diva, that stuff just motivates me, puts me at 
peace and in the state of mind that I need to be to do great work. So we already established that I don't wake up early. And so you might think I get that you okay, so you must just wake up early and just get to work, right? That's why it works. No, I don't eat that frog. And if you don't know what I mean, eating the frog is a productivity technique where you do the most difficult work first. And it's based on a quote from I think like Mark Twain or some old dead dude that like had great impact in the world. So someone like that talked about how if he had to eat two frogs, he'd eat the biggest one first, aka just get the hard stuff over with. Instead, I like to do what I like to call first pancake productivity. Because isn't eating a pancake a more enticing and desirable morning routine than eating a frog. Let me tell you what I mean by this. Uh, it sounds weird at first, but I swear pancake productivity is the best and it's based on a real theory that like foodies have talked about. They always say you have to throw out the first pancake in a batch. Either the batter's off or the pan isn't heated right or you have the wrong amount of butter or oil or whatever on the pan. And I brought proof, okay? So when I was outlining notes for this, I brought proof. This is a really common thing to the point that like food blogs ask the barefoot contessa about it. So a lot of cooking and pancake people say like just make the first pancake small, just accept it, know it's going to be shitty because you're still adjusting the heat and the amount of butter, let it be a throwaway. Basically that whole concept about the first pancake is about how the first one is just always a throwaway. That's what I do with the first hour or two of my work day. So we've already established that I'm really tired uh, the first few hours in the morning. I've stopped trying to be a morning person. When I do get to work in the morning, I start with the easy stuff. I I know that the first hour or two of my day is going to be a throwaway in terms of creativity and deep work. I don't even try to sit there and write a new blog post for a client because I know that I would spend most of the time just sitting there staring at the screen and not writing anyway. So I'm no longer going to try. So when I do get the work in the morning, instead I start with a small stuff it's like checking the work writer clubhouse. Uh, it's always like one of the first things I do in the morning, checking my email. We'll get to this more in a sec because I know that that would ruffle some traditional productivity feathers. Uh, I schedule social media. All, basically all the things that we're told not to do first thing in the morning because of the eat the frog technique, I do because of the first pancake productivity technique. Uh, so first productivity, first pancake productivity and planning, uh, realizing that was such an eye opener. It was actually in the middle of reading a romance novel one morning when I felt like I could be working uh, because the character were making pancakes and they threw the first one away and they had a conversation about first product uh first pancake theory or whatever it's called and I was just like that's why I'm not working right now that's why I'm reading this book comment or even better share share this somewhere if you think that first pancake productivity will work for you because we have got to get the word out about this guys lastly okay I hinted at this in the last one but yeah I check email first thing in the morning. I said it and I'm not ashamed. I totally understand the thought behind not checking email right away when you start working for other people. But again, I don't think that this is advice that takes people with some mental illnesses into account. I like to say I don't have the inbox anxiety that those experts always talk about when they say that, you know, checking it first thing in the morning gives you anxiety. No, I don't have inbox anxiety. I have every other type of anxiety. And checking my email helps reduce them. People say that checking it uh, first thing and seeing all the different things people want from you or that you have to do or whatever makes you less focused and more stressed and so that you can just like start your day better and do better work if you avoid it. But here's the thing about anxiety. I'm going to worry whether or not I've actually read those emails or not. Uh, but if I do go through that stuff, I can deal with some of my anxieties and fears and unknowns. Uh, so I don't spend tons of time on my email. I have written a bunch of blog posts over at workwriter.co about different ways that I've reduced the amount of email in my inbox. So it doesn't take more than a few minutes. It's not stressful at all, but I just, I have tons of systems in place to make sure that first thing I can look at my email and just rest. Um, it's just, it's not stressful. And so it's a, checking it, if anything, it deals with stresses I have around other things. Like if I'm stressing about client work and I have an email from that client and stuff like that. Um, so it doesn't take more than a th few minutes and I have tons of systems in place to make sure my inbox is not a stressful place. Because of that, I, because of my anxiety and the way that my own anxiety works, again, this might be different for someone else. Uh, but I scrolled my inbox right away and I'm fine with it.
If you loved the, um, the advice and things that I said here today, if you're loving the stuff going on in the comment section with those amazing productive unicorns, uh, you're going to love the Work Writer Clubhouse. So you can sign up for that if you're interested. And we just, in the, in the clubhouse, we just all hold each other accountable to creating our own definition of productivity and our own routines for that and then sticking to it letting go of productivity guilt and self-care guilt and all of that good stuff that we all need more of in our lives if we want to really make things happen so that is all for now and i'm not too over time today so i'm gonna sign off and i will see you next week go listen to lizzo if you want to get in the mood for some really great work wow i am sorry i am out of breath I was dancing to get pumped up, as one does, and I danced a little too hard. Whew.